And now I've talked about points uh, compared to vectors, but what we're gonna do now is look at how do we turn, uh, take two points and turn that into, uh, compute the vector between two points. All right, so how do we compute this vector? So we have, let's say two points and actually I want that to be a little bit closer. There we go. And we'll say the first point, we'll use the same letters we're using before, A, B. These are points now, so I'm intentionally using parentheses and not diamond brackets. So I wanna be extra careful with that. So these are points, we're gonna use parentheses. And what I want to do is figure out what is this arrow or this vector between the two. We'll call this vector V. All right, so how do we get this vector? It's actually pretty easy to do. I'll call this P0 and P1. So this vector is gonna be end minus start. Which in our case will be P1 minus P0. And that will be P1 C comma D minus AB. Now when you subtract two points, you get a vector. So we're gonna change notations. So this is C minus A comma D minus B. So I intentionally changed notation here. So we got vector notation. And here we have points, which use parentheses. do one example here. Now if you have trouble remembering this, uh, the probably the best way, at least the best way for me to remember this, I just think of a bow and arrow. Just right, right on top of that. Let's do this in highlighter. Let's get a better color. Ooh, light blue. There we go. So think of this like a bow and arrow. Uh, what you do if you're going to shoot a bow and arrow, you're going to first uh, attach the arrow in there correctly, basically at the front, and then you're gonna pull the, uh, the bow back. You know, pull the bow back first and then figure out uh, if your arrow's in there correctly. So, first thing is up here. Second thing, pull it back to you know the starting position. So that's the way to remember, remember this. So let's do one quick example. We'll go right into three dimensions here. So find vector from, we'll go with uh, two, three, negative one, two, zero, six, seven. So V is gonna be now you want to be careful, this is start, this is end. You're going to find a lot of things in math are end minus start. And it's, it may seem a little silly to write end minus start, but it will definitely help you remember this a lot better. So end zero, six, seven minus start, two, three, negative one. And we're doing one coordinate at a time. So it's zero minus two comma six minus three comma seven minus negative one. And we have a vector here. So I need to switch into diamond notation. And we get negative two, three, seven plus one is eight. There we go. If you want IJK notation, this would be negative 2i plus 3j plus 8k. So that would be IJK notation.
So next up, we're going to find a unit vector. Uh, well, first we'll talk about what does it mean to be uh, parallel. So parallel vectors. So probably the best way to think of a parallel vector is they point in the same direction. All right, easy to draw. Oh, no, I didn't mean to draw them the same length. One of them may be quite a bit longer than the other one. All right, so how would you figure out if two vectors are parallel if you couldn't just look and see the way that they're pointing as the same? So if we call this vector u and, or that's, that'll be v and this one will be u. So they're gonna point the same direction if I can scale one of the vectors. So if I take V and make it longer, let's say it's twice as long, and then I get U, what relationship does that have? We write it down. So that would be alpha V equals U for some alpha. Now this is a scalar, but it needs to be greater than zero. So what happens if alpha equals zero? Well, what is zero times the vector u? You actually get the zero vector. Uh, so if alpha is zero, the only thing uh, you'd be parallel to is the zero vector. So it's a little silly to talk about something being parallel to the zero vector because the zero vector doesn't point in any direction. Uh, so that's why we don't allow alpha to be zero. And I'll talk about negative alpha in a minute. But before we do that, let's talk a little bit more about uh, scaling vectors. So if you multiply a vector by a number bigger than one, it makes your, it stretches your vector, it makes it bigger. So if I multiplied V by three, let's say I'd be way out there. And what happens if I multiply V by a very small number, let's say I multiply V by uh, a third, what I will get is a vector that's one third of v. So if you multiply by small positive numbers, you will basically shrink the uh, vector or uh, scale it down. If you multiply it by a number bigger than one, you will stretch the vector or scale it up. So these were all scaling by positive uh, values. What happens if we scale by negative values? So we get some vector v. So we saw a negative one V will make it point the opposite direction. What if I did negative two V, it would point still the opposite, but it would be twice as long. Now these still, they point in opposite directions and what we call these two vectors are anti-parallel. So it looks almost exactly the same. Except now, alpha is negative. So parallel vectors are positive multiples of each other. Anti-parallel vectors are negative multiples of each other. So we're gonna find the unit vector in the same direction as four comma negative three. All right, so let's go ahead and just measure this vector right away. So what is the magnitude of V? Maybe it's a unit vector and we're already there. So we got square root four squared plus three squared. Again, I'm ignoring the negative because I'm just gonna square it away. 
16 plus 9 square root 25, which is 5. All right, so that vector is 5 times longer than it should be. So how do we take a vector that's 5 times longer than it should be? So maybe it's pointing that direction. I didn't draw an axis in, so it can point whatever direction I want it to point in. So this is V. V is 5 times as long. What I really want is this little vector right here. Now I'm going to call this vector u for unit. So how do I go from v, the bigger vector, down to u, the smaller vector? So we need to stretch or scale this vector. So what we're going to do is multiply by number alpha times v. Now how do I figure out what number to multiply by? Well, in this case, my vector is 5 times longer than it should be, so I'm going to multiply by 1 fifth or make it 5 times shorter. In general, uh, I need my uh, magnitude of u to equal 1. And u is alpha times v. And I'm going to solve for uh, alpha. So I'm using that magnitude property I wrote down above. So the magnitude of a product is the product of the absolute value of the scalar multiplied by the magnitude of the vector. So solving for alpha. So alpha is the reciprocal of the magnitude. Uh, but I didn't really solve for alpha. This is the absolute value of alpha is the reciprocal of the magnitude. So I want same direction, which means alpha is going to be positive. If I ask for opposite direction or the anti-parallel unit vector, then I would go with the negative uh, 1 over the magnitude. So basically alpha is the reciprocal of the magnitude. That's how you uh, scale a vector to be a unit vector. So looking here, our magnitude for our example was 5. So this is 1 fifth. So our vector u is 1 fifth of this vector v. is the unit vector in the same direction.